the Tulane Green Wave. And, of course, we are all big fans of Willie Fritz here on this program. Uh, Tulane last year, uh, that was about as bad of a season as you could possibly get last year. Two sure. and ten. Uh, however, the postgame win expectancy says that they should have been closer to uh, four and eight. They were 4.33, 7.67. Um, their projected SP plus record this year is six and six. They were six and six against the spread last year, but they did go two and ten. Now, a big sign for them improving this year is they are number 21 in returning production. They bring back 75% of their production from last year. They are number four on offense, number 72 on defense. And when you look at their roster strength, they're actually more talented on the defensive side of the ball. Number 49 there, number 63 on offense, number 60 overall. Uh, they did lose nose tackle Jeffrey Johnson to transfer. They lost cornerback Jalen Monroe. They lost defensive end JoJo Dorcius. Uh, and they lose linebacker Kevin Henry. But they do keep Michael Pratt, the quarterback. They keep running back Ty J. Spears. They keep wide receiver Shea Wyatt. Uh, center, Sincere Hainsworth, who looks like he could be an NFL guy. Uh, and then linebacker Dorian Williams. Let's talk about the offense here. They've got a new OC, Jim Zavoda. Uh, Zavoda, I hope I say that right. Uh, he is the former head coach of D2 Central Missouri. Uh, they do lose Chip Long. I do wonder if Chip Long just did not how he didn't know how to deal with so many young guys because they were really really young last year. Um, but he moves over to take over the offense at Georgia Tech. Uh, a big part of them returning, you know, number four uh, returning production on offense. Michael Pratt coming back. They get eight of their nine receivers back, and they get every running back back. Uh, that's going to help. It was a it was a youth movement last year, and. You know, a one-year stopgap for an OC, that, that's not a great combination. Like, I, I think they're more talented than what they showed last year. Uh, on top of that, you know, I, I, I think that this team, the culture, you could see was pretty good because you didn't have, like, some kind of mass exodus of transfers. Like, it, it was not – normally if a team is used to winning and then they go 2-10, and 10, you'll see a bunch of guys transfer out. They didn't have that. Like, I think Willie Fritz has a really good culture down there. Uh, you tend to agree with that? Yes. Willie Fritz is a outstanding coach, and I think we are going to see the greatest uh, mark of improvement from year one to year two or whatever, last year to this year, than we've seen in college football in a long time. I would agree with you, except that Baylor went from two wins, like they went from two and seven in 2020 to twelve and two last year. <laughs> so t- okay, but, I don't, hang on, but there was a couple of years between there. I'm talking that. Well, was no, no, that was that was from Baylor 2020 to Baylor 2021. But I do agree with your sentiment that yes, uh, in the AAC, you don't normally see a jump. Uh, I think they are going to be pretty good. Uh, their two best players on defense last year were both freshmen. Uh, the defensive end Hodges had 15 tackles for loss, five sacks. The DB Jaden Kennedy who was basically a utility knife. Like he could play safety, he could play corner, like just whatever. Uh, there's more fresh faces coming in. At the linebacking core just stacked at the top with Dorian Williams and Nick Anderson. You need those two to be healthy because you don't have a ton of depth, or at least not experienced depth behind them. Um, Chris, they went 0-5 in, in close games last year, in like one possession games. Uh, just like we talk about teams are going to regress back to the means, when they go like four and one in one score games, the same is going to be said for teams that went zero and five. Like you're not going to go zero and five in one score games again. Like I just don't believe that. Um, I mean, it, you look at this. Like if Fitz is just a better coach than two and ten. This looks like a rebound year. I've got them at seven and five. I could certainly see them doing better than that. Um, now, obviously, last year showed they could be worse, but I, I think seven and five is a pretty good bench. Seven and five. Uh, I got them seven and five. I like it. You know, it's crazy. We don't talk about these before uh, before we actually get on here to record. Like, we don't match notes or anything. And yet, we still come up with pretty close uh, records here. Like, at Memphis, you were 6-6. Six and six, I was 7-5. and five, But we both had Navy 4-8. and eight. We both got Tulane 7-5. and five. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE. 
at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.